Today we got Palo Wood furniture that actually has style, using LED lights and a coffee table, glow in the dark epoxy, getting started in 3D printing, wooden nuts, and a lot more. So check it. I am back. How are you doing? I am drinking Humboldt Brown from the Humboldt Brewing Company, and it is good stuff. I missed last week, so we got a lot to cover, so let's just dive right in. Recently, I put out a video on upcycling an old alarm clock. Check it. Hello, I'm David Petruto, the Drunken Woodworker, and today I have an upcycling project for you. I love browsing antique stores and thrift shops, and I found a couple of these old alarm clocks with the numbers that flip up. Here, I've gutted the clock and I'll be remaking the case for it. The eight pieces of the shell are joined together using what's called bird's mouth joinery that involves a special router bit. There are two different kinds of bits that you can get, one for six-sided pieces and one for eight-sided pieces as you see here. You'll also see some glass cutting and a new toy that I'm using to die cut some metallic cardstock for the face. I am not a big fan of pile of wood furniture, which is why I don't show it much on this show, unless you do it like this. This was put out by Make Magazine, which they forgot to mention the creator in the article, and I found out that it was a guy named Matt Egan. Matt does not have a website, Twitter, or Facebook that I could find, but you could read the full article about this desk at the link down below. This next one is from Woodworkers Journal, and I'm really liking their videos lately because they go beyond traditional woodworking. The lighting is controlled by a small remote that not only allows you to dim regular white light, but select from a rainbow of single colors. Purchase for less than $25 on Amazon.com. Here's the wiring diagram I used for the coffee table. I set the edge guys so that the cut is spaced about 5 16ths of an inch from the inner edge of the frame. Once fully charged, the battery in my coffee table will run the light strip for several hours, or even longer if the LEDs are dimmed. Woodworkers Journal also has some videos out on CNC, so I like that they are keeping up and staying modern. Good stuff to you guys. Next up is from Ty Mosier, and Ty is killing it with this video. It's a glow in the dark and in the daylight sign. Check it. I'm Ty Moser, and this is the Mono Local Workshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a sign that glows in the dark and in the daylight. Using a cheap uh, ink roller, I just roll it on there, make sure I get a really good fit. And I put about two teaspoons of a uh, glow-in-the-dark blue pigmented powder. Since I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time in my shop with the lights off, I wanted my sign to glow during the day and night. So I picked up some ultraviolet LEDs higher it makes it sit about a quarter inch off the wall which lets the uh, the black lights inside of it really give the whole thing a really cool back glow. I need to do this with my CNC screw that router in a hand crap. Knife making videos are all the rage these days and this next one comes from switch and lever it shows you his take on making a knife. Check it. First we need to prepare our wood blanks. Since I want two different woods in my knife handle, I'm starting out with a piece of walnut and a piece of oak. Start by preparing fabric pieces a little bit bigger than the area you want to put them into. Mill and file a slot in a piece of brass to use as the bolster. For this knife I used a durable satin polyurethane varnish, as I did not want to darken the color of the wood pieces as oil usually does. Depending on the fabric you use for your micarta, the end result will have different textures. I used a fairly coarse cotton fabric, which also shows through in the final result. Oh, we ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. We got a lot more. Here is another one from a popular magazine. This one comes from popular woodworking magazine and features Tim Yoder cranking out nut with a bolt. Check it. Today on Wood Turning, we're not screwing around. Well, actually, we are. We're going to make a threaded nut and bolt. I'm just going to wiggle the handle over to the side a little bit. Now I have my tenon. This blank is four inches, and I could have shown you that, but this is not the bandsaw diaries, it's wood turning. When you look at the nut here, you can see I've got an angle coming in, because see, a nut's not just straight up and down. And if you want to, you can actually make these cuts in two passes. And since this is Coca Bolo, 
I'm just letting the bevel of the tool finish the wood for me. You want to take a little wood off at a time. So if I find out that this isn't cut as deeply as I need it, I just simply back it off. Mm -mm -mm. That was fun. All right, I am a total sucker for biopics, especially ones that highlight some of my favorite woodworkers. And this one is done by Vigil Films, highlighting Mr. Kyle Toth. I'm Kyle Toth and I'm a woodworker in Southern California. I started doing woodworking when I was like, I don't know, 12, just making stuff. I'd get Home Depot gift cards for, you know, Christmas and my birthday and I'd just buy plywood and make go-karts and I started getting into skateboards and I would start making uh, plywood furniture. So I kind of was on like this path that I didn't really know I was getting into. Mm, that was super well done. Speaking of Kyle Toth, he will be a guest on the next Brain Pick hosted by Bob Cleggett of I Like to Make Stuff. That is February 17th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is a live Q&A, and I never miss them. They're always fun. You want to check that out. Uh, if you can't make the live show, they are always up for viewing and listening afterwards. So you're going to want to follow Bob from I Like to Make Stuff to keep up with him. And speaking of Bob Claggett, he has a new video out on how to assemble a 3D printer. Did you see how I transitioned from Kyle to Brain Pick, from Brain Pick to I Like to Make Stuff? In the biz, we call that flow. I don't know what I would do with a 3D printer, but you could say I'm 3D printer curious. Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to build a 3D printer. There's a bag with everything you need for each stage of building the printer. You attach the motors to the bottom plate by just putting some screws in through the front. Once you've finished all three carriage arms, you attach them to the center platform with the screws just like you did before. The wires from the limit switches can fit inside the slot on the back of each one of the extrusions. You are like me and you want to learn more about 3D printing, I suggest you follow Bob and I like to make stuff as I am sure he will keep you up to date on his journey with 3D printing and we can all learn along with him. There were a crap ton of podcasts for your ear sockets the past couple weeks. Wood Talk number 218, Shop Talk Live number 78, Workshop Waffle number 13, Modern Woodworkers Association number 69, Woodshop 101 number one debut episode from Jeremy Crawford, Andrew Short, and most importantly, Making It, a podcast about making things with your bare hands, hosted by myself, Jimmy Diresta, and Bob Cleggett. We put out new episodes every two weeks. We talk about creativity, the inner game, and everything else handmade. We were recently ranked number one on iTunes in the hobbies category. That's what I'm talking about right there. Our latest episode, we talk about fears and doubts, and it is my favorite one so far. I will drink a beer to that. Know what I'm saying? All right, Twitter questions using the hashtag WWWR. First one comes from Oz. Hey, David, I'm making a bathroom cabinet. Any suggestions on the finish? I don't want to epoxy the whole thing. Thank you. Please don't epoxy the whole thing. I would use spray lacquer, I think. David writes, I noticed your flip clock video, you're planning with a Delta Shopmaster. Any regrets on not going with a DeWalt or Rigid? I've never used DeWalt or Rigid, so I don't know. Mine works fine, except for the horrible snipe that I get every time I use it. Next question comes from Timothy. Thinking I need a bandsaw as my next tool. Any suggestions on size, brand, price range for a hobby woodworker? I currently have the 14 inch. Works fine for me. When I got it, lots of people said, oh, you're gonna need the 17 inch. I don't need the 17 inch. 14 inch works great for me. I don't know what you're gonna make, so I don't know what to suggest for you. A bench top one might be just fine. Most hobby woodworkers have a 14 inch bandsaw. It works fantastic. Fantastic. Mine is Grizzly. Grizzly works fine. I'm sure the Jet works fine. I'm sure the Delta works fine. I'm sure the Harbor Freight one even works fine. I don't know what brand to suggest. I'm not a brand guy, not brand loyal until they pay me sponsorship money. Boo. Grizzly. Call me. 
All right, you can submit your questions via Twitter using the hashtag WWWR. If you're new to this channel, I put out new woodworking videos every single week. If you like what I do, you can buy me a beer, which is a money donation. And this week, I would like to thank Joseph from New Mexico, Mr. Wandel from Canada, Chris from Arizona, Daniel from New York, Theo from the UK, Thomas from Washington, Axel from Sweden, Andy from Canada, Mikhail from Denmark, Dan from Colorado, Jack from New York, Samuel from Minnesota, Wesley from California, Angel from Chile, and Dustin from Washington. That's it guys, be safe, stay passionate, and make something.